An electrophysiology study, or EP study, is a test used to evaluate your heart's electrical system and to check for abnormal heart rhythms. You may require an ablation procedure to correct this rhythm. Your doctor has ordered this test and you will come to the Kelowna General Hospital to have it done. If you feel unwell while waiting for your procedure, please contact your family doctor. Before the day of your test, you will receive several phone calls. The electrophysiology coordinator, or EP coordinator, and the heart rhythm clerk will be calling you and asking you lots of questions to make sure you are ready for the test. October 27th, the arrival time is 7 a.m. The EP coordinator will call you about two weeks before your procedure at the scheduled date provided to review all the information that you will need to know to prepare for your upcoming procedure. You will be sent an email with patient instructions and other helpful information about your procedure. Please read it prior to your phone call with the EP coordinator. Please also have the included medication list filled out with your current medications prior to your scheduled phone call with the EP coordinator. The EP coordinator can answer any additional questions you may have about your upcoming procedure at this time. You will also receive a phone call the night before your procedure from an EP nurse to go over any last minute details for your procedure. Welcome, my name is Cam and I will guide you through your journey. When entering the hospital, you will come to the waiting area at the Red Heart. Maps and parking details are in the Electrophysiology Studies and Cardiac Ablation Guidebook. A nurse will meet you at the Red Heart and bring you into the preparation area. We will then check you in, which will include taking your weight, checking your blood pressure and vital signs, reviewing your medications, shaving your chest, back and groin as necessary. After this, there will be many other people who will come and talk to you. A cardio tech will take an ECG, an anesthesia assistant will put in your IV, the anesthesiologist will complete their assessment, and then the electrophysiology doctor will come and see you. The doctor will discuss your procedure, including the risks and benefits. Previously talked about the risks of this procedure and the benefits of it. And do you have any questions about all of this? And this is a great time to ask any final questions and discuss any concerns you have before your procedure. Once these steps are complete, you are ready to go. Now you are in the electrophysiology lab. There will be the electrophysiology doctor to do your test, the anesthesiologist will give you sedation to help you relax or go to sleep, depending on your procedure. There will be nurses to help get you ready and assist the doctor. There will be a technologist to work the machinery. And after your procedure is complete, you will be wheeled on a stretcher back to the recovery room where you started. In the recovery room, your nurse will connect you to the heart monitor and blood pressure and do a brief check. It is expected that you may be drowsy as you wake up from your medications. Do not worry, we will assess you and monitor you frequently. The nurses will check your groin site, your vital signs, and the pulses in your feet. You will get another ECG, and sometimes you may need an x-ray after your procedure. We will call your family to update them and let them know when to pick you up. If your family is coming from out of town, please let your nurse know so we can call with plenty of time. You will have to lay flat for four to five hours after your procedure, keeping your head flat on the pillow and your right leg straight to lower your risk of bleeding complications. You will be offered a drink, a popsicle, or a snack at this time. Before you go home, the electrophysiology doctor will see you to explain how the procedure went and explain any discharge instructions. But it all went really great today, okay? Okay, great, thank okay. you. You take care. The nurse will go over any follow-up appointments you may have, review any of your medications, whether to continue or stop them, and what to expect when you go home. When your family member arrives, they will show them how to hold pressure over your groin site in case of a bleed. If possible, please choose a family member who would be capable of performing this pressure hold. Complications are unlikely, but we will review what is normal after an ablation, and we will review what complications to watch out for. For the next 24 hours, do not drink alcohol or take any sleeping medication, and do not make any important decisions or sign any legal documents. After returning home from your procedure, you will need to avoid any prolonged bending or straining for one week, and do not lift anything over 10 pounds. Also during this week, you should avoid stairs if possible, or climb them slowly, and avoid any sexual activity. 
You will be able to resume a normal diet right away, but if you've had a general anesthetic, you may experience indigestion, bloating, or be unable to eat large portions for a day or so. You can have a shower the following day, but please do not soak in a bathtub, a hot tub, or a pool for at least three days. The dressing on your groin can come off in 24 hours and leave the area open to air. The site will need to be kept clean and observed for signs of infection, such as pain, redness, or warmth to touch. If you think the site is infected, please see your family doctor as soon as possible. The other thing you will be checking your site for is bleeding. Bleeding can occur in two ways. Outward, which will be seen easily, or inward, where you may feel a painful lump. If you notice sudden bright red bleeding, feel a golf ball or larger sized lump, or have severe pain in your groin site, please lay down on the floor and call your family member. Your family member should apply firm pressure, as taught by the nurse, and call 911. This does not occur very often, so try to relax. It is not uncommon to experience some chest discomfort, mild discomfort to the groin site, or short episodes of arrhythmias after an ablation. It is also not uncommon to experience nausea, grogginess, or a so th sore throat after anesthesia. You may also experience an increased resting heart rate, a decreased exercise tolerance, and swelling of the feet or hands after your ablation. These should resolve themselves on their own. You will be given information as to when to restart your blood thinners and all other medications. This will be written down for you in your discharge booklet. Your nurse will also explain complications that are not normal after an ablation. These do not happen often, but you should know what to look for. It is not normal to have bleeding or large amounts of swelling to your groin site, a fever above 38 degrees, a cool, tingly, pale, or numb leg, severe pain to your groin site, severe chest pain, difficulty speaking, difficult or painful swallowing, or vomiting or passing blood in your stools. These are all circumstances in which you should call 911 and seek immediate medical attention. We ask that you please see your family doctor in about a week to check that your groin site does not look infected. The Heart Rhythm Clinic nurse will call to check in on you around two weeks and again at about eight to 12 weeks, depending on what kind of ablation you had done. You will be given the phone number of the Heart Rhythm Clinic with your discharge instructions. If you have atrial fibrillation that lasts longer than 24 hours, or if you feel unwell, please seek medical attention. Episodes that are shorter are not uncommon for the first few weeks after your ablation. You may also require a Holter monitor, an ultrasound of your heart, and follow up with our nurse practitioner or heart rhythm clinic nurse. All of these appointments will be written down in your discharge booklet. Please refer to this discharge booklet once you get home for all of the information discussed in this video. We hope that you have a smooth and restful recovery from your ablation. We look forward to caring for you.